I'm wearing my mask. I hope you are too. We need to wear our masks and we need to social space. Some are calling it distancing, but we're gonna call it social space. And I'm here in conjunction with the Crystal Cove State Park and we're doing a collaboration of trying to share some of our indigenous games. And um, I brought a lot of things on my table and we're gonna make some and some that you can even make with recycled items at your house. I am from the Wanenyo Band of Mission Indians, a Hushman Nation. We generally say that we are the indigenous people of Orange County. And uh, from the, in the north of us is the Tongva, and there's some shared space there. And to the south, there is Luceno, and right at the border, there's a little shared space there as well. <clears throat> but generally, we are the indigenous people of Orange County. As a matter of fact, where we're at in Newport Beach, in my lineage, uh, my people are from Gavette, which is right here in Newport Beach. So I always feel right at home when I'm talking to you from Crystal Cove. Well, see all these things? All of these things do something. And one of the things we're going to look at first is the stave game. Now, the stave game is a stick game. It's like a dice game. And they're made from bones. Now these bones right here, I have to tell you, they're not from an ancient animal. They're from my short ribs that I made not long ago. <laughs> and I boiled them and boiled them and boiled them. And pretty soon I sanded them and I said, I'm gonna decorate these just like they're my ancient stave games. So you're looking at bones that if your mother cooks short ribs, you can even make it yourself, but you got to make sure that all the meat is off and you got to boil it and scrub it really good. And then you got to dry it out in the sun for a couple of weeks. That's what I did. And then I sanded it and I sanded it with regular sandpaper. What's really interesting about sandpaper is that in the ancient time, we used shark skin. Isn't that something? And we would use the shark skin and the shark skin is like a piece of sandpaper that never wears out. So you sand them really well. And then what we would do, and this one shows it right here, is that we would burn it. Now I burned this with my lighter just to see if I could do it, and I did. And then I went ahead and just got a permanent marker and I made some designs. Now our designs are really kind of simple, mainly because we didn't have a lot of tools. So we used, as, uh, we used uh, the lava rock, and the lava rock is obsidian. And that has to be cut in a certain way, so it's sharp. Oh my goodness, it's as sharp as a, uh, a, a, a knife that would be used in surgery. It's amazing, a scalpel. So we would just edge it, you know, and we would cut and carve it. Then what we would do is take the soot from a fire and mix it with some animal fat of the animal. And then we would rub it in to that etching. So that's how we would get the black. So how are you going to make it? Well, your mother may not cook short ribs, so that may not be possible. But what you could do is you could get some popsicle sticks and you could take a marker and you could just put some lines on it and you could make your own staking. How is it played? Well, it's usually put in a basket and then, or you can put it in your hand like this and then you shake it in your hand and you just throw it out. And when you throw it out, what you're looking for is to see if all of these bones are, the decorated side comes up. Now for that throw, I'm gonna scoop this out of the way there. It didn't come up. All decorated is the best points. That's two points. All plain is also two points and half and half, three and three, that's one point. But any other combination is zero. Now you do have a song that you get to sing, which is a song that's supposed to bring good luck. But if you sing the song like this, hey, nick me, hey, wala, hey, nick me, hey. If you sing it like you don't care about it, it's probably not gonna bring you good luck. You have to sing from your heart, or your belly, whichever is bigger. And you know where I'm singing from, my belly. All right, I'm gonna teach you the song. So everyone say, hey, Nikni, hey, Nikni, hey, Wana, hey, Wana, hey, Nikni, hey, Nikni, hey, Wana, hey, Wana. 
Hapsiwana, Hapsiwana, Heiwana, Hapsiwana, Heiwana. And um, it really has no, you can't translate it. It's just a song that is recognized really up and down the coast. There's hundreds of songs that are played with these stave games. That's the one that I like to use. And um, when you sing it, then when you go, woo, that's the end of the song, then you throw the sticks. So I'll sing and I will let our engineer sing after me. She's there, okay? So here we go. Hey, Nikni, hey, wanna. Hey, Nikni, hey, wanna. Hey, Nikni, hey, wanna. Hey, Nikni, hey, wanna. Hopsy, wanna, hey, wanna. Hopsy, wanna, hey, wanna. Hopsy, wanna, hey, wanna. Hopsy, wanna, hey, wanna. Woo! Woo! What is ah? Good try, but it was only four and two. So there's no points. If it had come up like that, that would have been two points. And if it would have come up like this, that would have been two points. And if it would have come up three and three, that would have been one point. So get some sticks, decorate one side only. And if you can't remember the song, as long as you sing from your heart and go, la 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 just sing it from your belly and from your heart and then throw your sticks and you can play the stave game too okay so i would like to show you uh some stave games that were made uh that were burned so these were burned uh with uh just just a regular you know uh arts and crafts burning unit so that's those and then these oh these are funny this is a funny story about these right here now, parents, you actually can go to my website, which is journeystothepast.com, and you can order a lot of these things, and we have them kind of pre-prepped for you, and then you can make them at home. So if you do order the state game, it comes like this, and they're plain, and then you sand them, and then you decorate them. Well, I was doing a video conference, or a Zoom, and they forgot to tell the parents to have uh, you know a marker because normally we use a black marker and I said well we're gonna have a scavenger hunt I said we're gonna decorate one side only but see if you can go find some stickers and the kids went and they looked for stickers I found some and that decorated this one and I said even a band-aid a band-aid will work so we put band-aids on this one and then I said maybe you might have some tape and they found some tape and that one decorated that one and some found just a pen and so they decorated so you know even though in the ancient time you know it was really special how it was made you know we're playing it as a game so if you had to you can use lots of recycled items all right we're going to set that aside and we're going to talk about another game which is called the walnut dice game and what's interesting is it's almost like the state game but it's a little different how can you recycle it? These right here are made from walnut dice. And you gather the walnut dice, and there is something that's on the beach. How, well, let me explain it. If you've ever been on the beach and you've been walking around, and then when you get back to the car, you feel like you've stepped on gum, you know, and you're going, eh. And then you find out that it's tar. Well, that tar is found along the beach. It actually is oil that seeps up and sloshes around, and it finds itself its way to the surface. And our people uh, were very ingenious, and so we would gather that asphalt and that tar and we would save it. What would we save it for? A basket like this. We would cover the whole entire thing inside and out with tar. Sometimes we would even use pitch, and guess what? It turned into a bucket so that we could take the water out of a tule boat or maybe carry the water. So that sticky asphaltum was very important even in basket weaving, I saw an ancient basket that had these little pieces of tar on it. Well, there was a leak in the basket. And so they had used that to even patch up some of the baskets in the ancient times. So this right here is a nut. I suppose you could use an English walnut. And you could use something called sculpey, which is like a clay. And you can even find cheap clay at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> and you could use that too. And you push it inside. And then we would decorate ours with abalone. 
Well, you don't have to use that bologna. You could use little beads and you just press the beads inside. Same way that you play the stage game, uh, you put it in a, a little basket or your hand and you sing that song again and then you put them out. Again, look what I got, four and two. So that would be no points. But with our game, and we do sell this product, you get you have counting sticks. So I got nothing, so the next person plays. Now, how can you make it at home? Get the tops of a bottle of, um, I like to say, uh, the best one is a Coke bottle because they're a little bit bigger than a water bottle cap and you fill those with the clay. You put some beads in the clay and it works the same way. I don't have a sample of it, but it's such a great idea. And I kind of just came up with it in the middle of the night because I know parents, you're out there, you're trying to think, well, where am I gonna go get the black walnuts? It takes a lot of time. Just save six caps, fill it with uh, some of the uh, clay, press a few little beads in it, and you've got yourself a beautiful game. So we'll do it one more time to see if maybe. Hey, nick me, hey, wanna. Hey, nick me, hey, wanna. Hopsy, wanna, hey, wanna. Hopsy, wanna, hey, wanna. Woo! Ooh! Oh, four and two. So no points there again, but it still was fun. <laughs> so we're going to put all of that just right in here for right now. And now we're going to talk about another game. A game that comes from an acorn. This is the perfect acorn, and this actually comes uh, more from the mountains. The acorns that are here are um, live oak, and so they're skinny, and you can't use them. So our people would trade for these for the people from the people from the mountains. Now this one I found online. It's a plastic acorn. It was perfect because when I was going to the schools, sometimes children had a you know reaction to nuts and such. So this is perfect in it's just the a fake plastic one, but it works fabulously. However, oh wait, my one let's try it this way. So it spins and you drill on the top and you put a toothpick and you put glue and then it just spins. Now how was it played a long time ago? You'd have a partner, you'd spin it, and whosoever would last the longest was the winner. But Miss Jackie, being a teacher as I am, I created some um, actual targets. So in the middle it was 200 points, the next ring was 100 points, the next ring was 50, and the last ring was 25. So while you were playing, you had to use your math skills, and we would play with pods of all these kids at a school, and it was so much fun. And the kids that were really great with the math, they loved to add all those numbers up. So if you want to add another dimension to this, teachers and parents make a little, uh, I like to put it in a tray as well. So I put in a tray with my target and spin away and wherever it lands, then, oh, I got 100 points, and the next spin is 50, so we have 150. So, and then it's really fun when if you have about six people around the tray, then you get to add up everybody's points. So someone has 25, someone has 50, and then you're really using your math, and it's really a great game. So this is the acorn spinning top. And if you go, um, let's say if you go up to the mountains and you, and you find this perfect size right here, and you collect some, don't forget to put it in the freezer for about a month. It'll kill every little thing that's inside of it. Or you can bake them at 200 degrees for about an hour. And that way it's ready because if you don't clean them that way or prepare them that way, then little teeny, uh, there's worms in there and you know, they'll start to eat away at your uh, acorn. Alrighty, so that's over there. Uh, let me see here. Well, we were going to make a basket, but before we do, we're going to make a ring toss. Now, a ring toss was made. You would make a ring about a size of this right here from willow. And you would wrap the willow around, then you take another willow, and pretty soon you'd have a nice ring. This was made out of uh, cordage that came from either yucca or dogbane, and then you would find a little branch Usually the um, elderberry is really good, and but I found the perfect one. It's a chopstick. And there's so many different quality, you know, chopsticks. So when you go to your Asian, uh, you know, restaurant, ask them if you could 
buy a little handful and usually they'll say, oh, I'll just take some, you know, but I have paid for them to get these. So, but I love this. So let's make it. Here is a chopstick and I put a piece of yarn there about this length. It's about a little over a 12 inches. And then I get a pipe cleaner and I'm going to put some beads on it. Why? Because I want it to have a little weight on it. So we're going to put four for today, but if you end up putting 10 or 15, it's okay. It just gives it a little bit more weight. So I'm going to put it to the middle and I'll put these on. What's really nice about that too is when you get a lot of beads, you can make a pattern, you know, and that's so beautiful when you start to see a little pattern with those beads. So we just have four for today. And then what we're going to do is just cross it over like bunny ears and we're going to wrap it around. I want you to see how I wrap it around. Oh, I love hearing all the nature and the birds were out here outside. A little, I don't know, they sound like crickets, but they're little birds and they're so beautiful. I hope that you can hear them too. All right, so here's the ring and I've actually wound it up so that it disappears within the ring. And then I'm going to take the end of this string. So I get a string on a ring on a stick. And then once I tie it on, um, I'm going to make it so that it, I, I'll double knot it, okay? And for the same thing up here, you want to double knot it too. I like it a little bit longer, so when I'm looking at this, I would say, oh, I wish it was just a little bit longer. So you want, so when you're measuring your, your yarn, do it like uh, maybe 15 inches, because you use a little here and you use a little here to make that tie. And then you swing it up and you try to catch it. Oh, I'm pretty good today. <laughs> Not, I don't always get it. Mothers, if you have little young children, they say this is like teaching them reading. It's like a eye-hand coordination. And also those that are in third and fourth grade, it also is still good for you too, because uh, eye-hand coordination is still a process uh, for all kinds of learning. So even though it's fun, you know, you're doing something wonderful for your brain up here. Now, this is the way I like to challenge people. If I can do it once, that's great, but can I do it twice straight in a row? And some, there was one little boy in a school that did it 49 times straight. He's got the, he's got the championship for Miss Jackie, but usually people can do three or four, but it's really hard to do consecutive rings. So we'll see. I may not even be able to get this one, uh, but we'll try. I got it. Okay, that's great. Good job, Jackie. Yay. Can you do it another time? I'll try it again. I really want to get it. I got it. So that's two in a row. So I keep going until I don't get it. And then I got to start over again. So once you get good at one, you can challenge yourself. Now here's another way to challenge yourself. Parents, teachers, tell them that every time they get this, it's worth seven points. And if they get it twice, what's two times seven? 14. Maybe they're struggling with their eight tables. So again, you're going to use your, your you know, uh, this for a way to include math, alrighty? So um, that's another game that's so much fun and you can do that with a recycled chopstick, a string, pipe cleaner, and beads, okay? And that's called the ring toss. Now, one of the things we have also is our clapper stick. This one is made from an elderberry and they are mostly made from an elderberry. But we have so much, you know, uh, bamboo that um, and schools, they buy them by the hundreds. So we make them with the bamboo. We split it, prepare it. They sand it with sandpaper and then they decorate it. And I'll sing a song for you. And teachers, this is one of our, uh, one of our uh, arts and crafts that we sell to the schools. And now we're virtually teaching how to make things. Hi, 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 ho, hey, 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 ho, hi, 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 ho, hey, 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 ho, oh, 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 Moila, that means moon, Temet sun, Ekerl earth, Bahala water. Woo! And that song came to me in the middle of the night, and I had asked Creator to give me a song that I could bring to the schools 
that um, because some of our songs were sacred and I did not want to, you know, break our tradition. So that is my song, my family song, and it's gone on. Other people have learned it. And it's so fabulous to be able to know that even in this day and age that you can create your song too, you know, just with the integrity of really being serious to, to make it come from your heart. Um, so clapper sticks, a great, great instrument. Now, one of the things I wanted to show you how you could make this too. Anybody recognize this? Yeah, it's a paint stick. So the way that you make it with a paint stick is you have to separate it with a little piece of cardboard. So when you separate it with a little piece of cardboard, put them together, I'm gonna do it this way, put them together like this. Then you just go ahead and put your uh, rubber band on and you actually can really go ahead and make this um, and decorate it. So here you go. It looks like this, and then you just go like this. So it's a wonderful way to, you know, show you can, you know, you have this, but you may not be able to have access to this. But we do sell these at journeysthroughthepast.com. But if you are on a limited budget, I think these are only 39 cents, but... 15 cents. So, teachers, that's another, another one. Now, we play rattles, and this particular rattle was made uh, from a water bottle, and I love that we recycled. And then what I did was I put a stick. I went searching, and I got a stick, and I got a few sticks, and I put it in there, and then I masked, you know, with masking tape, and then I put just regular pinto beans, and then I I put tape because that receives the, you know, the uh, permanent marker. Now, in our tradition, only boys play the rattle. But this is not a traditional rattle. It's a rattle that's an arts and craft piece. So, uh, though I want you to know that when we go to gatherings, I would never pick up a rattle because it's not our tradition. But, you know, if you're a classroom teacher and you want to teach that, Please mention that in the today's traditions and even yesterday, uh, women did not play the rattle. And that's the thing that we have to respect sometimes that in cultures, there were men things to do and there were women things to do. You know, men were hunters. Men followed the fathers and the grandfathers and the uncles and they taught them how to make the spears and how to make the, you know, arrowheads. And the women would stay back and they would make the baskets, take care of the children, make the quiches, you know, make cradle boards. <sighs> women did a lot of things too. So, but it was separated by gender. All right, so now we're gonna get to the most fun, which is the basket weaving. So, my baskets we sell on my website, and when you see it, it looks like that. So I created this design. Uh, this normally was flat, and then in the middle of the night, I said if I could get it in this shape, it almost looks like an egg beater, correct? Uh, that it would be easier for the children to push it and put it into the cup size, and it works out beautifully. So when you're looking at this, you undo that, and you un. Uh, do the the weaver this is a weaver when it's been sitting for a long time you've got to soak it in water you may cannot do this without that you see that it looks almost like a spring we don't want it to be a spring we actually want it uh, to not be a spring so we're gonna pull it out like this see how I'm doing that stretch it out and it's already kind of pulled that out and then this looks like a jellyfish wouldn't you say but we want it to actually be pulled out just a little and when you pull it out, it looks more like a daddy long leg. So I'm gonna do that now. Bring it out, <clears throat> bring it out. And incidentally, we do this uh, Zooming with classes. So if you're a teacher out there watching this, you can order these. We prepackage them under the strictest, you know, the all, all of the, my staff that makes these are wearing gloves, they're packing with, packing with gloves, and then we seal it off individually so that when the kids get them, that they're very safe. And so, as we look at this, and I've opened it up to more of the daddy long legs look, I have to go back and see this, this piece right here. That's the weaver. And this has to be creeped up 
to here and I'm going to hold it like that. Now I want you to look and you can see it's over, under, over, under. That's the pattern. So we're, it's like a twine basket. So this is under. What's my next move? Over. That's right. So my finger takes it and pushes it over and then it pulls it up to an under. And we do that for a few little times and then we stop and then we push it towards the belly button. Yes, this has a nickname. That's called the belly button. And then you just keep weaving over and under, over and under, and then you keep pushing towards the belly button. And you just do this. It, it will take you about a half an hour. It usually takes me an hour when I'm in a big auditorium with 100 students. But when you're just at home and your parents can sit and watch you, you probably could do it in a half an hour. So the only thing I'm going to do is just take it to the end of this. Just watch me over and under. I'm turning it over and under, over and under. So here's another basket right here, a little smaller. And we actually give the um, virtual lessons. So if you go to journeystothepast.com and get a hold of me, I can, um, if you're a teacher, we will teach you how to do this basket. And uh, we also have a special video for single parents that just want to, single families that want to do it. So that's available too. So you start like this and look at the difference in these baskets. They both were the same, but every hand makes a different basket. <laughs> and I've, through the years, I've made over 75,000 baskets and I have seen many different varieties. Well, there is one more thing I wanted to talk about and that is cordage making. And we're going to do that with the raffia. And I am going to call my assistant from the side. That will be Miss uh, Winter. I soaked mine, but you need two pieces of raffia. And hello there. Hello. We're going to social distance a little hello. bit. Yeah, go back a little bit more. And we're going to pull it tough like okay. that. And we used uh, yucca. But instead what we're going to do is I tied a knot here. There was two pieces. Now we're stretching it. And it's kind of great because it's kind of showing us social spacing, but we will get, get a little bit close together. And we're going to twirl in opposite directions. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to go to the right. You'll go to your right and we're just going to twirl. And this is the way that my people made rope. Rope was very important. We needed rope for everything because we didn't really have all the tools that your father has in his garage today or you know whoever builds or uses tools but rope we had and once we get it nice and taut and you have to really twirl it in a minute we're going to bring our hands together and it is going to make cordage so let's see how we do let's just bring it up a little like this and see if it'll twirl itself you can just let go and see how it just twirls itself usually it can go really fast hold it like this and I'll make it tighter. Look what I'm going to do. I'm going to go like this and I'll bring it under. I'll go like this and I'll bring it under. And pretty soon it starts to look really like a little, uh, it's like a friendship bracelet. Have some of you girls made a friendship bracelet? Well, that's like making cordage. And I'm going to hold it up. Maybe I'll let Miss Winter bring it up close to the camera so they can see what it's supposed to look like. And see, I'm pulling it out and bringing it in under. Pulling it out and bringing it under. And I kind of twirl it just a little like that. Go take it to the camera so they can see. They make lovely little bracelets. So a little bit over there, down. Can you see that? Just like those friendship bracelets. And if they're longer, you can even make a headband because we did it as a headband. Uh, I had this one last little thing. And this, we're not going to make it, but I'm going to show it to you. And this is a Thule doll. And so the Thule doll was made with Thule. And uh, it was weaved in this form. And it was supposed to kind of look like a baby in, a, in a, a kind of like a cradle board. And so the children would have their little communication and talk and sing with their uh, Thule doll. Uh, but then when I, I did camps for... Oh gosh, 20 some years, the boys would get this and they started to use them as, you know, like spears. So I thought, you know, that probably made sense. And I'm sure little ones, uh, little boys probably did that. Um, 
So that was another thing. And you know what, boys and girls, I think that uh, one thing that I love about our games is that there's no electronics. Sometime you could be up in the mountain and have nothing. Maybe, maybe it was, you know, you just were locked up there and it snowed and you didn't bring anything. Well, guess what? Go out there and find a stick, just like this one, like this. And you put it on your hand, throw it up, and you catch it. If you can catch what, then say, I'll try two. And here's another game. And if you catch those two, you go to three. Here's another game. Take those same sticks. I've got two of them. They're behind my back. I could have one in one hand, one in the other. I could go back and forth. Two in the right, two in the left, one in, you know, one in each hand. If you take a guess right now, where do you think I've put those two sticks? Did I separate them? Did I keep them in the left hand or the right hand? What do you think, Miss Winter? One in the left and one in the right? She thinks I separated them. <laughs> I beat her. She didn't win because I put them both in the left hand. Well, our time is up, and I'll see you next time with something else. But in the meantime, I'm going to say thank you in my native tongue, which is Nokshun Lovet Om Palo. From a deep place in my heart, I thank you. Stay safe. Don't forget to wear your masks <laughs> and keep your social distancing. Bye-bye.